For all of my growing up, I fished、uh, on the shores of Connecticut, and these are the creatures that I saw on a regular basis in the early 90s. This is what I found. We're taking between 80 and 90 million metric tons out of the sea every year. That's the equivalent of the human weight of China. Let's look, though, at the four choices that we are making right now.、Um, the first is shrimp. Five, ten, fifteen pounds of wild fish are regularly killed to bring one pound of shrimp to the market. They're also incredibly fuel inefficient. Dragging for shrimp is one of the most carbon-intensive ways of fishing. The other thing that's going on here is if we have shrimp draggers dragging for shrimp, catching a huge amount of bycatch, that bycatch in turn gets ground up and turned into shrimp food. The next most consumed seafood is tuna. So tuna. Is this ultimate global fish? These huge management areas have to be observed in order for tuna to be well managed. But tuna is a spectacularly bad animal for aquaculture. Tuna are warm-blooded; they can swim at over 40 miles an hour. Not a great、uh, candidate for aquaculture. The next creature is salmon. Connecticut used to be home to a lot of wild salmon. But if you look at this map of Connecticut, every dot on that map is a dam. And these are precisely the things that stop wild salmon from reaching their spawning grounds. So, as a result, we've turned to aquaculture, and salmon is one of the most successful, at least from a numbers point of view. Problem is, we've also gone crazy with the amount of salmon that we're producing. We're still killing a lot of these little fish. The last of the four, you know, what the industry calls white fish. There's many fish that get cycled into this white fish thing, but it really doesn't have what's called an oily fish profile. It doesn't have the EPA and DHA omega threes. What about this poor fish, the clupeids? Well, one possibility that a lot of conservationists have raised is, could we eat them? They are tremendously fuel efficient to bring to market. They also are omega three rich, a great source for EPA and DHA. So that is a potential. Another possibility is looking at bivalves, particularly mussels. Now, mussels are very high in EPA and DHA. They are also extremely fuel efficient. They require no forage fish. They actually get their omega threes by filtering the water of microalgae. Mussels and other bivalves do tremendous amounts of water filtration. A single mussel can filter dozens of gallons every single day. We also could look at a vegetable. We could look at seaweed, the kelps that can be high in omega threes, can be high in proteins. Tremendously good things. They filter the water just like mussels do. And the last fish is a question mark. This creature would have to be vegetarian. It would have to be fast-growing. It'd have to be adaptable to a changing climate, and would have to have that oily fish profile, that EPA, DHA, omega-3 fatty acid profile that we're looking for. I have been reporting on these subjects for 15 years. Every time I do a new story, somebody tells me we can do all that. Great. It doesn't seem to be getting scaled up. It is time to scale this up. This is what we've been going with. But if we went with this or some configuration of it, we might have a little more of this. Thank you.